In this nugget, we'll take a look at how to get up and running very quickly with GNS3 version 1.x. Let's begin. New versions of software are very exciting, but they can also be a double-edged sword. For example, if we're always used to going here for a certain function and the new software has it down here, there is a little bit of a learning curve. And with the recent update to GNS3 version 1.x, I wanted to share with you how we can leverage most of the content that we've learned in this course from the old .8 version of GNS3 and help ease the path as we start working with version 1.x. To get up and running with the new GNS3, the first thing we need to do is download it from gns3.com. If we go to the older website of gns3.net, it will redirect us over to gns3.com. For our demonstration together, I'm going to use version 1.1, which installs everything, including Wireshark, the SolarWinds add-in, GNS3, the whole kit and caboodle. And so about an hour ago, I downloaded this software and I just said, OK. I recall Nancy Reagan's idea of just say no regarding drugs. Well, with an install of GNS3, it's just say yes. <laughs> just say yes to everything, and then you'll have GNS3 and all these subcomponents installed on your Windows computer. Once it's installed and running, we're going to point to an iOS image that's done slightly different than it was in previous versions. If we want to modify the startup configuration, the basic configuration for a brand new router on a new topology, we can tweak and tune that as well. I'll show you how. And then we'll simply create a topology. And then we will want to set the idle PC at least once on our model of router that we're using. And then in the future, it'll remember that idle PC. And we shouldn't have to touch that again for that specific model of router. So we've launched GNS3 version 1.x. And I'm going to create a new project. And I'm going to name this 1.1 test. And if we like, we can specify the location where we want to save that. And we're going to click on OK. Now, initially, if we go to routers, this list is empty because we haven't identified any iOS images to use inside this emulator. So to add an iOS image, we're going to go to Edit. And from the Edit drop-down menu, we're going to select Preferences. And then we can expand the Dynamip section and select iOS routers. And by default, the list is empty. But down here at the bottom, we can click on New. And then we can use the Browse button to navigate to the location where we have an iOS image that is supported inside of GNS3. On my local computer, I've got an iOS image for iOS 15.24. So I can select that, and if it's an uncompressed image, when I select it, it'll offer to decompress it for me. Or if you already have an uncompressed image, we can simply select that. And then as it walks us through this wizard for creating this new iOS router, we'll click on Next. And it's asking us what the platform is. Now, it's basing that based on the name of the iOS image that we pointed to. However, if we had renamed that iOS image to something else, we do have this drop-down list so you and I can tell GNS3 exactly which hardware platform that we're intending to emulate. And there is a finite list. This is the list that's supported by GNS3. So I'll leave that at the 7200. We'll click on Next. I'm going to allocate 512 megabytes of RAM for the iOS image. And we have the option of setting that higher or lower as well. I'm going to leave that as 512 and click on Next. And this is really cool. For the base iOS image that we're setting up, we can tell it beforehand what type of interfaces we want it to have. That way, every time we bring a new router onto the topology, it'll have those interfaces ready to go. So in slot 0, it has a 2FE. That's two fast Ethernet interfaces. In slot 1, I'm going to go ahead and put the PA4E. Those are 10 megabit interfaces for Ethernet. And in slot number 2, I'm going to go ahead and put a PA4T+, which is four serial interfaces. And that way, I'll have plenty of interfaces to play with. And one of the reasons that I like using Ethernet interfaces, the 10 megabit ones, at least with this iOS image in GNS3, is because it causes me less errors, specifically with IPsec and with large amounts of ping traffic that I'm trying to send. I've experienced syslog error messages and drop packets if I try to use the higher speed interfaces. Because it's just an emulated environment, I like to avoid any type of unnecessary errors. And that's the main reason that I'm choosing these 10 megabit Ethernet interfaces to use in this router. Then we'll click on Next. And I don't have an idle PC yet set up for this model of router. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Finish. And we can set up the idle PC in the interface on the topology. And before we dismiss this window, we absolutely want to make sure that we click on OK or Apply to save those changes. So now that you and I have saved those changes, if we want to bring a router into our topology with GNS3 version 1.x, we simply click on the router icon. There's our 7200. We'll drag it over. We'll go ahead and bring a second one out as well. And now if we hover over those routers, check this out. In slot 1, I've got my four Ethernet ports that we added. 
And in slot two, we have our four serial interfaces. So now if we want to connect these together, we can click on the connector tool and simply click, select, click, and select. We'll go back and turn off that connector tool. And I'm also going to click on the icon to show the interface labels as well so we can see exactly what those are. Now, if we have not yet set the idle PC, we would definitely want to do that. We'd want to start one of these routers. I'm going to start R1 by right-clicking and clicking on the Go symbol. We can open up a console to that router. I currently have Secure CRT installed, so if I click on the console icon, or I could right-click on the router and click on console here from the drop-down, it's going to use Secure CRT. GNS3 also has the support for PuTTY as well. So now that we know this is up and running, to set the idle PC, we'd right-click on R1, select idle PC, and it's going to give us a list of all the idle PC values that we could choose from. And we're going to use the drop-down arrow, just like we did with GNS3.8. And anyone that has an asterisk is a potentially better idle PC. So I'm going to click this one with the asterisk. If there were two or three, I would simply try one of those or pick one of those. Click on OK, and that idle PC value will now apply to any routers that I bring out based on this iOS image that I have right here. And then you could use Performance Monitor or Task Manager just to verify that your CPU utilization is not going crazy. So here's my current Task Manager. I've got my recording software chewing up a little less than 4% of my CPU. And there's Dynamips at 1.5%. And having a very low CPU is a good indicator that you've got a good solid idle PC value. And then we could bring up R2 as well by right-clicking, clicking on Start. And we could open up a console to that as well by right-clicking and clicking on Console. So here, this tab, I have R1 and R2 is just booting up. Now, what's really cool is that when a router boots up, it looks at its startup config to get its initial configuration. If we do a show startup config, it's going to show us the commands it used right out of the gate for this brand new router. Then if we save the configuration, that'll be saved as part of our project files. And what used to be called the base config.txt in version .8 of GNS3 has had a name change. So if you and I wanted to change or tweak the custom boot config for a new router, we'd go to Edit, Preferences, and then under Dynamips on iOS routers, we would go to this file right here, which is iOS underscore base underscore startup dash config dot txt. And that is the initial configuration that's only used for a brand new router that doesn't otherwise have a configuration. If we wanted to edit that, we can click on edit for this iOS image. And for the startup config, we could say, you know what? I don't want to use this text file. We could point to our own. So maybe we go to that text file, we customize it, and then we tell GNS3 that we want to use the new text file for our initial router configurations. So what I've done, I created a customized text file. And if I wanted to use that for my new routers, I'd click on Browse. And here's the initial one that comes with GNS3. And so what I did, I created this ios based startup config kbtxt file. And if I wanted to use that for a brand new router that didn't have a config yet, I'd simply select it, click on Open, and click on OK. And then OK once more to confirm that. And now if I bring out a new router, it's going to have that brand new configuration as a starting point. So to demonstrate that, let's drag another router out. Let's just go ahead and start them up. It'll be using the idle PC that we previously set. We'll right click on R3, go to console, and we can watch it boot up. And one of the things that I like putting in my startup config is an alias command. So if I type in C, it knows I mean config space T, and I press enter. And it works. And the reason it works is because my customized startup config file had that alias command in it. So if we do a show startup config. There's my alias command that was part of my customized txt file. And this is only relevant when a router does not have its startup config. Once I take this router and I type in wr or copy run start to save the running config to startup config, now the router has its own configuration file stored as a file as part of this GNS3 project the one that I'm currently working on. And I just did a write again because I got this kind of a funky little message saying, hey, you're attempting to overwrite from a different iOS version. And occasionally we may have a little bump in the road, but if it's not impacting us, which it appears this is not impacting us in any negative way, that is not a showstopper. And if we wanted to save our configurations as part of the GNS3 project, we'd go back to GNS3. We click on this icon for save, just as it was in previous versions of GNS3. And now R3's configuration is now saved as part of this GNS3 project. In this nugget, we've taken a look at how we can take all of our knowledge from previous versions of GNS3, for example, .8 and so forth, and apply those same skills with a few tweaks regarding where things are located to the new and updated version 1.x of GNS3. 
I would strongly recommend that you start using and practicing with the updated version of GNS3. And if you're looking for more information and training on how to use and work with GNS3 in general, I would invite you to check out the other nuggets in our GNS3 course at cbtnuggets.com. I have had a great time in this nugget and I'm so glad you joined me for it. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.